Well, the time, let's do the AV gear just to start with because I don't use them. And I will tell you, I, I am fussy, fussy, fussy about my, uh, uh, I, want, I want cordless. What I will ask them is, is your handheld mic, what has the best sound? I do not stand still, I I've, I've trot around. But I want the best sound. So if it's the handheld mics, well, usually the lav is not as good for a large group. Usually not. It depends on the place. So I will find out about that. But I don't do PowerPoint. I am the visual aid. Now I have, I do have a number of, of little things I bring that I use. Well, those, are those are, for instance, extras, yeah. yes, those are little extras. One of my favorites, the one that comes to mind right now is, you know, in talking about um, when we do a, a humor workshop, I talk about how important it is to get in touch with what makes you personally laugh. Because all of us have a different sense of humor. And we, and for me, you know, for instance, I puzzled for a long time over the fact that uh, Cousins, Norman Cousins, wrote that wonderful book about the healing power of humor and told how he, you know, checked himself out of the hospital. That was not a terminal illness he had, by the way. Um, checked himself out of the hospital and into a luxury hotel where he got much better care and it was much cheaper than the <laughs> hospital. And, and he was able to get two hours, now we know all know this story, pain-free sleep, laughing at movies, cartoons he brought into the hospital. But they were Abbott and Costello and the Three Stooges. Believe me, they don't do one thing for me. I could have laid there, you know, it wouldn't. So what you've got to know, it is true, laughter does that. But you've got to know what makes you laugh. So I have a whole bunch of things I carry around, but one thing I have is a book, and it's fun with Dick and Jane. You know, it's the same uh, Dick, it's the same old Dick and Jane you went to school with when I was. I went to a one-room schoolhouse in Montana, but but this my kids went to school with Dick and Jane, and you remember Dick and Jane and Spot, and Spot was the dog, and Jane was nothing to look at either when you come to think of it, and. <laughs> For some reason, and now there's a new book, and I always have it. In fact, I have several copies for gifts, too, um, written by the original author, but it's what happened to them after they grew up. So you, so mother, as it opens, mother's going into an assisted living community, and father's dead, spot's dead, <laughs> you know, the dog's dead, or the cat's dead, but... Um, Sally now has, she's all grown up. She's never managed to have a meaningful relationship in her life. She lives on radicchio pretty much. And um, Dick will not be surprised to learn as a systems engineer. And Sally, well, if you didn't know, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but she's divorced. Oh, Jane. Jane, Jane, we went by Sally. Mm, Jane, oh. Sally, Jane is divorced, but she got custody of the Mac. And she has self-actualized. <clears throat> she is an Amway distributor. Oh. And I would always say at this point, and Phil has arranged for her to come back and talk to you next week. <laughs> and so, and they always love that. Yeah. But what it does is, practically speaking, get them to thinking, what, what is it that makes you laugh? Because we don't laugh at the same things. Yeah. And we don't, so I do, I do use props like that. If you're going to use props, practice them first, because they, you can't just pull them out and use them.